All right, let's quickly talk about action cameras. Ooh. So the setup that I currently have that you guys are looking at right now, or looking through rather, is a GoPro Hero 5 Session and the cheapest $10 lav mic on Amazon. And that mic is in my helmet. It's a pretty awesome setup. I feel like I have a private recording studio in my helmet right now. So that's what's producing this image and audio quality. And the mic is just plugged into my phone as you guys saw. And when it comes to the GoPro Hero 5 Session, the thing I like the most about it is how small and lightweight it is. When it's on my helmet, I can barely even notice it's there. So that's pretty sweet. And the image quality is good. The only thing I don't like about this camera is the low light capabilities. So when the sun goes down, you cannot see anything with this camera. So I'm limited to daytime use only. And taking a look at the analytics of this channel, we're actually experiencing like a lot of growth. And I want to take a minute to just say thanks to everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, or just watches my videos. It really means a lot to me. And because of this, I want to invest a bit more in my equipment to make better content for you guys. Now, all because you buy an expensive camera doesn't mean that your videos are going to be any better. There's plenty of people that create media empires just off of their smartphones. So the equipment and setup that I have right now I think is good enough. I mean you guys can let me know in the comments down below. But the main reason why I want to potentially pick up a new action camera it's for the extra capabilities and options that it might give me. And everything I'm about to say is an open discussion. I'm not set in stone on any of this. So please let me know your comments down below. Okay so when it comes to action cameras the go-to is GoPro obviously and the newest generation out right now is the GoPro Hero 10 and that does seem like a pretty good all-around camera I'm not the biggest fan of GoPro in general because this is their 10th generation and it still looks exactly the same as the first generation let's be honest it has two screens in total including one on the front you can get a media kit for it which allows you to plug in an external mic which when you're making videos audio is extremely important so that's a nice feature to have unfortunately the camera itself is like I think 500 bucks so it's extremely pricey for what it is if you browse amazon there's tons of really cheap knockoffs of gopros but i don't think i'm gonna go with any of those because i'm sure the image quality and just the overall user experience is pretty trash so from what i saw you basically have two alternatives to the gopro the first is dji which they make the drones and their image quality and just technology in general is really epic but in particular there's two offerings from dji that seem pretty appealing for what i do here the first is the action cam 2 and that's pretty comparable to the session gopro that i have on my face right now because it's very small and it has a magnetic modular design so you can magnetically attach other accessories to it to expand upon its capabilities so the image quality on the action cam 2 is definitely better than what you guys see right now although I don't think it's worth the upgrade at least at the current moment the thing that I'm more excited about is getting a different action camera to introduce a second camera angle to my videos and for that one offering from DJI is the Osmo and it has a three axis gimbal on it and it's a very weird looking camera and that camera could really open the door to what kind of videos I can capture for this channel. I was thinking the main use I would have for it is to put it on like a selfie stick and kind of hold it out or maybe mount it on my handlebars and using the gimbal I can have the camera always pointing at me or using my smartphone as a controller I can point the camera in any direction so I can show you guys stuff as I ride by and I think that would make the channel and the videos a lot more dynamic and fun to watch. Oh yeah and there's also one more option I was looking at and that's a 360 degree camera. I would use this in the same way as the gimbal but I don't have to directly point the camera at stuff because it captures a 360 degree image so that's what's been on my mind lately because the channel is growing I appreciate all you guys watching and I feel the pressure to make better and better content okay but now let's pivot to the main topic I want to discuss and that's the dichotomy between mid-drive motors and hub motors for those of you looking to build or even just buy an e-bike and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because one of my friends was asking me this very question and I don't have a solid answer. But for now, you guys can chime in in the comments and try to help us decide what's better, a hub motor or a mid-drive motor. So the pros and cons, let's begin with a mid-drive motor. So the biggest pro here by far is that mid-drive motors use the gears of your bike and thus have better torque and overall efficiency. And I would say the second main benefit of a mid-drive motor is that the motor itself is more protected. 
Although a big caveat here is I think that's only true if you have a full suspension bike. I think that's why all dirt bikes and just off-road centric bikes use mid-drive motors along with full suspension. It just keeps all the parts of the bike a lot safer in adverse driving conditions. Now the thing is, in my friend's situation, he's not going to be getting a full suspension bike. Here's the bike frame my friend is currently thinking about using, and you can notice the distinct lack of suspension. So in this case, I think that benefit of the mid-drive motor kind of goes away. Now another disadvantage of mid-drive motors is that there's just a lot less on the market to choose from. And from what I saw, the highest wattage mid-drive motor is around 1,000 watts, maybe 1,500. And if you look on Amazon for a mid-drive motor with those top-end specs, it's going to cost around like 800 bucks. And for comparison, a similar spec tub motor is like half the price. So the conclusion that I'm coming to here is that mid-drive motors are more expensive and there's less options to choose from. If you have a full suspension bike, then the mid-drive motor will be very well protected and safe. But if you don't have a full suspension bike, that benefit completely goes away. And that just leaves the last benefit of the mid-drive motors, which is the better gear ratio. But I have to say, from my experience, hub motors do not lack in terms of torque and power. I mean, I'm sure that a 1000 watt mid-drive motor in the right gear has more torque than a comparable 1000 watt hub motor. But to compensate for that, all you have to do is buy a beefier hub motor. So I have a 2000 watt hub motor in this bike, and it has plenty of torque. And this 2000 watt hub motor that I have in my bike is still less expensive than the 1000 watt mid-drive motor. So definitely chime in in the comments and let me know what you guys think because I'm probably missing something. Mid-drive motors do seem to be better quality, but considering the other factors of price and just all the options you have in terms of power for hub motors, I think it's the way to go, especially if you're not going to have a full suspension bike. But that's going to be it for the video. If you guys are still watching and enjoyed, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next one.